On this recap Monday installment of Locked On Texans, another heartbreaking defeat. Let's start the show. <sighs> you are Locked On Texans, your daily Houston Texans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, I mean, definitely disappointing. Um... We got the whole locker room fighting their tails off to go out there and get a win each week and um, just haven't been able to do it late in the game. Just got to find a way to finish and uh, finish with more points than the opponent. Welcome, everybody, to the Monday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm John Hickman, joined, of course, by none other than Cody Davis. LinkedIn Jobs, this episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl uh we got to recap the 30 to 24 loss on sunday the houston texans suffered at the hands of the kansas city chiefs in that game davis mills you know 12 for 24 from the field 121 yards two touchdowns through the air and actually, Davis Mills also had a touchdown on the ground. So a total of three touchdowns on the day for Davis Mills, a quarterback rating, a QBR 51, and a quarterback rating of 92.5. Jeff Driscoll also saw some action, only threw for a total of eight yards, was sacked one time, and Driscoll also got in on the running game, four carries for eight yards total. Royce Freeman, a guy that we – I can't remember the last time we called Royce for his <laughs> name for the Locked On Texans. Well, for the Houston Texans, but 11 carries, 51 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. And in the absence of Nico Collins, in the absence of Brandon Cooks, Chris Moore steps up, four catches, 42 yards on the day. He led the Houston Texans in receiving yards. Amari Rogers was second, two catches, 26 yards. And the two tight ends got involved in the passing game and turned the point points on the board for the Houston Texans. Jordan Aikens, three catches, 22 yards, one touchdown. And the rookie, Tegan Quintoriano, also had a touchdown on the day. And for Houston, a total of 30 of 18 touchdowns, excuse me, eight in the air, five on the ground. Also, a total of 58 plays, 219 yards. 12 total drives, 3.8 yards per play, and they also had four penalties for 33 yards and one touchdown. Time of possession for Houston, 27 minutes and 25 seconds. This game was close for the Houston Texans. Came down to the wire. Two weeks in a row for Houston. Patrick Mahomes, Kansas City. This was a game that a lot of people picked Houston to lose, including myself, Cody, and listeners. But they went into halftime with the lead after a missed PAT. This Mm -hmm. team fought four quarters, and again, they went toe-to-toe with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs offense in a close one. How impressive was this game for Houston? Um, Last week I came on the show. I said that the loss, the performance against the Dallas Cowboys was their best performance. I understand that this is also a loss as well, but I would like to call this probably their second best performance of the season. And first of all, you have to take a look at the rally of the situation. When you take a look at the Texans going into this game, there were 14 and a half points underdogs, just like last week where there were 17 and a half points underdog. And the fact that the Texans, were able to go toe-to-toe with not only the Dallas Cowboys from last week, but the Kansas City Chiefs of this week. Why is that important? Because, look, as of right now, a lot of people do believe, even though I hate to say it, and I'm one of them people, that the Texans actually gave two teams to where come February 12th, the day of the Super Bowl, it could very well be the Cowboys and Kansas City playing for the championship title. And that is not me just saying that. Lovey Smith is saying it as well. And you're looking at a situation where the Houston Texans with only one win 
hmm. on the season gave arguably two of what, without a doubt, top five teams in the league this season a run for their money in both games. They had an opportunity to win. And I know a lot of people are down on Davis Mills. I understand it. I get it. Yes, he did. Um, his, his fumble was very costly. It's part of the reason why we are not having a victory Monday, but I'm not about to sit here and bash Davis Mills because for the second week in a row, we saw Davis Mills that looked more poised. We saw Davis Mills that looked more better. And not only that, we saw a Davis Mills that is part of the reason why the Houston Texans had an opportunity to win this game towards the end. I want to go back to, of course, the last play of the game. First, first, first play of the drive of overtime, Davis Mills fumbled the ball. I'm not going to talk down on Davis Mills because when you go back and you take a look at that play, the one thing that I actually gave a lot of respect to towards Davis was the fact that he finally, in this game, used his legs to extend plays. Early on in the game, it worked. He rushed for a 17-yard touchdown. And I'm not about to sit here and crap on Mills because, John, we've been covering Davis Mills at least for over, what, uh, a year up until this point. And what is something you and I have been talking about this entire time? Use your legs to extend drives. When you go back and you take a look at that last play of the game, the pocket started to collapse. If I'm not mistaken, I don't believe he had none of his targets open. And the young man used his leg. It's unfortunate that he got hit from behind and caused the fumble. Before moving on, John, I do want to play this clip from Davis Mills during his post-game press conference. Yeah, I mean, a tough. I was just uh, called a quick game. They covered it pretty well, just zone dropped into the, the windows, and I figured I could pick up some couple yards with my legs. Um, defender made a really good play, um, punched it out, and it was a fumble. Um, obviously, you got to protect the football there. Uh, very critical situation in the game uh, when all you need is a field goal, to, field goal down in overtime after the defense made a big-time stop to get them off the field and get us the ball back. So, um, Disappointed, but I thought our guys fought hard and put us in the situation to win the game. Offense, defense, and special teams, we just got to find a way to finish it. Yeah, I mean, it's always the guy who you don't see who's going to make a play on it. Um, I just got to protect the football better. What did I just say? You heard it from the man himself. Also, by the way, I do want to mention that the offensive line for a second consecutive week had a really good game. I was a, I was a little bit nervous going into this game for the old line, especially considering that you know with Keon Green being out, they they move um, Titus Howard down to left guard, and I believe it was Charlie Heck that they put in place right. at right tackle. And I do understand that Jeff Driscoll do have a sack on the day, but there was an offensive line fault that was just due to his inability to get behind the line of scrimmage on a failed rushing attempt. Overall, on the offensive side of the ball for the second consecutive day, I love the fact that the Houston Texans played aggressive, and it's just another unfortunate situation, man. Yeah, when I look at this team in total for the day, holding Kansas City to 30 points with 502 total yards on the day, that's impressive to me, you know, and, and, and 313 of that was through the air. The rest came on the ground. But holding them to 30 points was very impressive. This is after they held the Dallas Cowboys to a low amount. And the week prior to they, them playing the Cowboys, they put up a 50-piece. I think that's impressive. But then I go right back to the offensive side of the ball, and I do go directly to Davis Mills. Did he fumble into overtime and crush the comeback or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it? Yes, he did. But I got to tell you, this entire year, I don't think I've seen as many impressive Davis Mills moments as I did against the Kansas City Chiefs. The dart to rookie tight end, Tegan Quatoriano, that was an impressive throw. And again, Cody, to go back, we were saying the feet, where are your feet? Move your feet, use the mm -hmm. legs, you know, get out of the pocket, do something. And to see him, you know, not overthink it. He took what the defense gave him, right? He had some space, and he was able to get in. He didn't try to force a throw or any bad decisions, which, if we're being fair, we've seen Davis Mills make those bad decisions. 
He didn't do that on Sunday in that particular play, right? There were some plays downfield that he made that I was impressed with his throws. Houston just lost it. This is one of those losses where in back-to-back weeks, you can look at both of these games, considering what you said, Cody, in February, either the Cowboys or the Kansas City Chiefs. We can even go back to the Eagles game in their first half. Mm -hmm. You know, these are some favorites to make it to the big dance. But in back-to-back weeks, Houston had competitive games when they were underdogs to the point where guys are probably regretting betting against the Texans. <laughs> That's how impressive of games they had. And, you know, uh, we, we look at Davis Mills coming out lined up in the, in the wide out and, and Jeff Driscoll, that quarterback, and whatever Pilp Hamilton wanted to do, man, in terms of trying to cause some offensive plays. But there were some impressive moments. This was a team that, you question whether or not if you were seeing this version of this team throughout the entire year, how many more of these L's could have been turned into dubs? But I was impressed by what they were able to do in spite of no Cooks, no Collins, no Damian Pierce, no Derek Stingley, mm-hmm. right? No King Young Green moving Tyus Howard back to left guard. Mm-hmm. Who, the combination between <laughs> uh, you know Larry Tums from Titus Howard for Sunday was great. Man, this was an impressive loss. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Listen, unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. And with therapists, you know, you can find a therapist that's trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. With BetterHelp They have over 3 million people with licensed therapists today. It's convenient, it's secure, it's accessible everywhere, and it's 100% online. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. I thought the guys fought, hung in there. You know, the takeaways always uh, give you a chance, and special teams too. So we, we fought hard, and I understand it's, a, it's still a loss. And um, we're going to keep showing up is what we're going to do. Uh, next, it'll be on to uh, Tennessee on a short week. Take your question by today. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen, to this Monday installment of Locked on Texans. You guys heard it. You guys saw it. Lovey Smith once again was a – was a little bit heartbroken by the fact that despite the great performance that the Houston Texans gave on both sides of the ball, unfortunately, they did end up getting another loss. And as great as the offense played in this game, once again, for the second consecutive week, the Houston Texans defense had arguably, if not their best, their second best performance. And one thing that I love about how well the Texans defense played You have to take a look at the fact that they did not allow Patrick Mahomes to get comfortable. I know when you take a look at the scoreboard, you see 30 points on the day for Kansas City, but it was not an easy 30 points. John, I know you're going to talk a lot about some of the big name players on this defensive side of the ball, but I do believe that everybody who touched the field on defense made some contributions in one way or another. Some guys that I want to shout out, Traymond Smith had another great day. MJ Stewart had a had another phenomenal day, but he also had some key stops. And Blake Cashman, a linebacker that you've been talking about a lot throughout training camp, throughout preseason. Yes, he had to wait around before he started to get his opportunity, but he had a very key sack on Patrick Mahomes during um, during the fourth quarter, if I'm not mistaken, of yesterday's game. Overall, it was a very good day for the Houston Texans defense. And, man, I just hate knowing that, once again, another great performance is, is just resulted in a loss. You know, I also forgot to mention in the first segment that early in the game, Houston had five, five or more plays with 10-plus yards offensively. And hmm. that doesn't happen much for Houston, at least not this year. But, you know, also for Houston defensively, man, they were able to, you know, create turnovers, right? Two two forced fumbles that they were able to get back. And when you look at what Houston was able to do 
in terms of, you know, security ball. If the ball isn't in Patrick Mahomes' hand, your your, your defense is doing something right. Uh, and then you also look at them just kind of getting after Mahomes, right? Uh, Cashman was sack, able to get a couple of tackles for loss. So for Houston, a team that's struggled throughout the year, and overall, they didn't necessarily stop the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, they nearly rushed for 200 yards on the day. But for Houston, they did make it difficult. Right? You got some more. Instead of third and threes, maybe for Houston, third and six, third and sevens, third and eight, third and nines. So they was able to make it a little bit difficult for Patrick Mahomes and not allow him to get comfortable, especially early on. I, I, I just was shocked that Houston went into the halftime with the league. But their defense had a very good, I mean, very good day. I mean, look at Christian Harris, the rookie, his best, best performance, three tackles for a mm. loss, 14 tackles. Jalen Petrie, second in tackles for Houston with 13. You know, he had a good day. Also, Christian Harris had a, you know, QB hit. We look at Christian Kirksey. He had a sack. QB hit, 11 tackles. So, like, these guys were flying for Houston, playing fast. And the trend that I've been seeing with Christian Kirksey is whenever he's able to play downfield, you get a better version of him. And so now with the combination of Kirksey and Christian Harris, one of those linebackers that can play side to side, you've been seeing Christian Kirksey play a whole lot better at that linebacker position. Overall, I mean, like I mentioned earlier in the game, they gave up over 500 yards and only held this team 30 points. This was a team that was projected to kind of go crazy on Houston. Hmm. And they did a very good performance of just performing the bend but don't break defense, right? And they was able to get after the quarterback. They made him uncomfortable. I thought that was impressive. Listen, guys, Christmas time is here. I'm telling you this, and you know this, but I'm telling you this because prospects – it's here to kind of really help you, like, you know, if you want to make some extra cash, you can do that with prize picks. Super easy. You know, you can pick two to five players, and it's simple. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. The best part about it is you're not competing against other people. So it's just you versus the prize picks projections. It'll be just Cody versus the numbers. It'll be just me versus the numbers. It's not me versus anybody else. And Prospects offers projections on any sport you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, NHL, PGA, baseball season rolls back around you. Prospects projections on baseball, college football, men's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis. Whatever's out there, guys, prize picks projections are available for that. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. That easy, safe and fast withdrawals and over currently over currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the prize pick app, go to prospects.com and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100 percent instant deposit match up to 100 dollars with promo code locked on. Thank you for making the Locked On Texans your first listen of the day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. You know what I want to mention with the Houston Texans defensively? It seems as though they've been playing better with this consistent personnel. At the linebacker position. So Christian Harris has come along, right? They've been getting him going. We all know the story. Training camp injury. Didn't get an opportunity to play. He said the working back. And he started to play a few games ago. And I really got to say this, man. It, I don't want us to overlook the – I don't know how to describe it, but his progression – Christian Harris has been progressing fairly well when he first started to play football to where he is now. And I think this was one of those games where you look back and if this was a Texan win, this would be the Christian Harris breakout game. 
Hmm. It still should be his breakout and, game. And, 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 and it is. That's why I'm missing it. He was everywhere on Sunday, right? There's been a personnel change with Houston. No more Kamu. Christian, Christian Kirksey has been able to kind of just play downfield when he's been playing good football. Christian Harris has been able to kind of be the all do it all linebacker. And for Houston, they've been able to kind of rotate Jake Hansen and Blake Cashman in and out at the linebacker position. But the two stables have been Kirksey and Christian Harris. And so I'm saying that because just like we look at Chris Moore, a player that I believe Houston should hmm. invest in for next year, I think Christian Kirksey should also be a player Houston can invest in for next year, considering what he's been able to do alongside Christian Harris and Des McKean. My goodness, has he not been one of, if not the defensive MVP for the Houston Texans? No, also, no I, I wouldn't also say Dan's, MVP. Well, well, I mean, he's if I had to give an MVP, I think I'd give it to Jelly Petrie because, my God, you're talking about a rookie that's starting to find his groove. Woo! Pretty sure has been nice. <laughs> I think Des McKean has just been – consistent for Houston the entire year in terms of football on the offensive side of the ball. You know what I was impressed of? I and mean, of course I, I can look at Chris Moore and say for back to back weeks, top receiver, and you are number three, number four receiver. You have been putting up some, some good efforts for Houston. That was a very, you know, super impressed with Royce Freeman, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a running back where, you know, after today I'm, I'm, I'm asking myself every time I see another running back touch the ball, why haven't he been using this all year? But Bryce Freeman was very impressive. And Davis Mills, I think, man, you know, he's trying to at least be on the roster. And if anything, a backup quarterback on Sunday, he was impressive to me with a couple of these plays that he made because I just hadn't seen him before. So I didn't think he had it in him. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you mentioned consistency with the linebacking core. But, John, I think that is that is why we're – talking about the Texans in a positive light on this Recap Monday installment because I remember when I did, you know, our Locked On Network Keys to Victories, um, I said the one key for the Houston Texans is to just find some consistency. And the reason why I keep going back to last week's game against the Cowboys and comparing it to this game, the one thing that I've noticed on both sides of the ball was the fact that they was consistent with their play, but they was also consistent with their aggressiveness. And it seems like what whatever they, they realized was working against the Cowboys, they just went back to that. And in some cases, it even looked better. Remember last week, we came on this show and said, you know, because of the Texans, they went to this dual quarterback system it seems like he gave Davis Mills an opportunity to process stuff better in game. We saw that again on Sunday, so much so to the point where in the second half, I don't even believe they called Jeff, Jeff Driscoll's number like that. And, you know, you know, it's unfortunately that, you know, their, their two best performance came with the loss, but you can still find some comfort in this knowing that this is two of the top five teams in the league today. Yeah. And, you know, I just hope that whatever they've been doing against the Cowboys, uh, against the Chiefs, you know, they could continue doing it throughout the rest of the season because now all you have is your division left. By the way, Jacksonville beating Dallas. I ain't going to lie. I brought a big smile to my face. Right. But you, you see what Tennessee doing, and then you got Indianapolis. So, you know, we've been saying a lot. Of, is there another win on this schedule? I think the Texans can pull off. One more victory if they can stay consistent. I think Lovey Smith, Pep Hamilton, the players, reporters, fans, everybody deserves at least one more win because, John, at this point, at 1-12-1, and one, I have officially, <laughs> for the first time ever, <laughs> embraced the tank. So Amen. just give me one more Amen. win. <laughs> And we could call it what it is. By the way, even though Cleveland won on Saturday, they are still on the outside looking into the playoffs due to that Jacksonville victory. So I don't know, man. Things are looking good for the Texans. Progression. First round picks. That's going to be what? Two in the top 10, two in the top 12. 
Things are looking bright here in the city of Houston, but my God, another heartbreak hotel situation. Mm, 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 mm. Listen, I'm going to start something right now. And only because I got to, right? If you know me, you know I got to do it. Boy, how good did Titus Howard look next to Larry Tunso? Let's not start that. Remember, we, we, we started that. How good? How good? Does that help? What do you do, Mute? God, you know I got to do it. Thank you guys for checking out the Locked On Texas <laughs> podcast. Here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Follow me on Twitter right there at John underscore Hickman 12. And as always, go to YouTube, please, if you don't mind. Subscribe, like, and comment. Let us know how you feel about the Houston Texans, the Locked On Texans podcast, and whether or not you feel like Titus Howard should be paired next to Larry Tunsil. For the Texans' future, no, just no. Out there. keep just him it on the right side. We did this last year, and it was a mess, especially after Laramie Tunsil went down. No, we are not about to do this again, John. But as always, you guys know me, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore twenty four. Once again, that's Cody C O T Y D A V I S underscore twenty four. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.